Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to have a chat with you guys about selling your art in an increasingly expensive city like Dublin. I want to use Dublin as an example, as a case study, because I just came back from a trip to Ireland. I was invited to speak in a conference held by the University of Galway in Galway. And in order to go there, I had to ask for a Irish visa because it's not a Schengen area. So I went and I got a six day conference visa only for six days and you know, it's very limited so I decided to stay four days in Galway for the conference and two days in Dublin in order to make the most out of my trip so I was like all day outside uh, visiting places and I discovered 10 amazing art space I want to share with you in this video and it didn't take long for me to realize one big issue is that Dublin is getting very expensive it's just like Beijing or Berlin you know the inflation is like beyond inflation it's not by you know one two three percent it's like housing price 18 percent growth year by year it's like what? Some things are costing like four or five times than the same thing in Madrid, my home base. And I'm not comparing apples to bananas. I'm comparing two European capitals and it's that expensive. Artists who are living in Dublin also told me the same. They find it very difficult to secure housing, to secure studio space. So there's a space crisis as well as precarity. Like they feel the fundings from the government is not very stable and also the income uh, to beat the inflation. It's very difficult to secure sustainable income to live a comfortable lifestyle in such an expensive city. So that's why I want to talk about this uh, uh, specific topic under the umbrella topic of how to sell your art locally. So first, I would like to share with you the 10 places I've visited, the people and art I've seen there. And then I will share with you my conclusion or findings and then potential solutions solution to combat this situation. So sorry for the long intro. Without further ado, let's get into today's video. So the first location I visited or I couldn't visit was the Inspire Gallery. The Spire is a public uh, large scale sculpture. That's why Inspire is inspired by the Spire. <laughs> it's a cute name, uh, but I couldn't find the entrance. So I went to the nearby art cafe called the Art Cafe. So I thought, okay, the people in the art cafe must know the information about the art gallery. I was uh, greeted by Mercedes from Barcelona. She's a sculptor. So she told me she knew the owner of the gallery, Dino Notaro. Unfortunately, everyone in the building had to leave because of the real estate investment. The gallery had to close shop. I left and I went to the next location, the lab. As soon as I entered the lab, I had a feeling that it must be run by the city council because there is the uh, visual arts section, there is the performing arts, the theatrical, musical, the children's workshop and the film studio. It's like a space for every creative uh, professional. And I think it's uh, the city council trying to be creative, to play fair as well, to have a space for everybody, to be inclusive. And I'm not complaining, but it's not a typical art place that artists would organize among themselves. It's not very organic. I like the messy, organic, run by artists for artists kind of thing. So after uh, going through the exhibition, I quickly left uh, for the next. Uh, I saw on the map Seoul Gallery. So I thought, okay, Seoul maybe is related to uh, Spanish, like the Sun or Madrid, the Seoul Square. So I went and I met the gallerist Martin Davis. He told me it was a coincidence. Uh, he was not Spanish. He didn't uh, mean to name it after a square in Madrid. He had actually never been to Madrid. And we chatted about the art market, uh, art fairs and this and that. And I asked him, uh, you know, is things going well? Because the previous gallery had to close shop, you know, like my concern didn't come from nowhere. And he told me it's difficult, but, you know, it's doable. In the past a few years back, he was in a different location for a long time. And the location was smaller, but more food traffic, more art lovers, collectors. So he was able to collect uh, a list of uh, customers. And then he's able to bring it to the new location, but the new location, although it's twice bigger, more beautiful, but the location is not ideal because it's not an artistic street. There are not so many other like art galleries nearby. 
and there are a lot of uh, like random tourists. It's next to the wax museum. So imagine what kind of people go to the wax museum. You know, tourists, and likely they will not go to buy a, a framed two meter by two meter artwork. So it's uh, understandable as well. So during the 20 minutes I was there, I saw one lady come in, pop in, one minute look, look, and then she left. So it's a typical uh, daily encounter of a uh, uh, gallery in this location. So he had to make a choice. Either he choose a better location, smaller, or a bigger space, less good location. You know, you cannot choose everything. You either choose the horn or the wing. You cannot have horn and wing because unicorns don't exist. Uh, to combat this issue, Martin is bringing artworks to art fairs, to art shows, to different uh, traveling exhibitions to be able to uh, meet and attract new collectors. And after that, I went to the graphic studio gallery, not far, and I met Elker, the German printmaker who is currently living in Dublin. Uh, she is a true maker. I can see she's very organized and she's uh, you know, on top of things. Um, I, I was like, okay, so how long have you been doing this? And I was like, okay, you know, you must been like, you know, for a few years. And she laughed and she showed me the brochure and the gallery had existed for as long as I existed or you existed, you know, on earth. You know, it's, it's that many years, a few decades. So of course they knew their business very well and my worries are totally unnecessary. Uh, besides this gallery, they also have a uh, lithography studio in the outskirt outside of the Dublin city. So it's combining different kinds of business models, different lines of works, complementing each other. So it's not just a gallery, but also um, they do uh, prints for other artists, for other businesses as well, and for their own gallery. So as they have their very nice niche business model. And then uh, Ilka recommended me to go to the paper. It's a group show organized by the Hangtaf Gallery. So I walked to the paper and I saw this beautiful show. It's 115 artworks from 115 Irish artists. And they're all prints. So you can purchase uh, very easily affordable prints. There is a price range for everybody. And there are a lot of food traffic, people coming in and taking pictures, discussing which is their favorite work. It's a very nice ambient. And I think uh, calling it a group show is an understatement. We should call it an art fair at a level of a fair, not just a, a small group show. I met Connor Smith, uh, the curator from Huntaf Gallery. I told him how much I love this. And he said, oh, you should totally visit the Huntaf original gallery, the gallery space that is permanent. Every month they have one artist and they rotate. So they have 12 artists. They have been only open for like a year. So they have only had 12 exhibitions. So I walked over to the Hantaf and I met Sarah Muti, who is a freelancing curator. Uh, she stands in for that day because the Hantaf is uh, understaffed. And she told me, oh, I organized the show at the complex. You should totally visit. So this way, I'm just going with the flow. People recommend me to a show I visit, so I don't miss out on any wonderful stuff uh, during my short stay. And to be able to go to the complex, I had to pass the Temple Bar Gallery Studio on the way. So I visited as well, and I met Lisa at the Temple Bar Gallery. So I laughed at the name with her. I said, look, you're a temple, you're a bar, you're a gallery, you're a studio, but what are you? And she's like, haha, you know, it's because Temple Bar is the area location. It's not their name, you know, it's like, so it could be a square, it could be a street, and that is the district name. And I said, like, if you're not for profit, how can you secure a beautiful location like this? So centric. The street is so busy with live music, restaurants, tourists. It's almost like behind the Pompidou Art Center is that busy. So I was like, how can you secure 30 studio space? It's a whole building. How did you do that? And as a not for profit, like, you know, where's the money? And she said, uh, with the help of city council and also the true secret to the location is they were there early. They were there decades before. The Temple Bar area was, there was nothing. When they started uh, moving into the building, they were the first pioneer to bring culture and attraction to the location. Of course, the city council wouldn't want to move them because maybe, you know, thanks to them, this location is becoming so popular and so uh, vivid and lively. 
And after the Temple Park Gallery Studio, I quickly left, hurrying to the last stop of the day, the complex. I was very worried uh, it was too late, you know, oh, maybe I couldn't visit the hot glue the exhibition by Sarah Muti. But luckily, I came across Mark O'Gorman. He said it's already uh, out of his office hour, but he could show me uh, quickly. So he very nicely uh, opened the space up for me, and I had a look inside as well as uh, the uh, studio area. They have around 16 studios. Also, this is an uh, artist community run by artists for artists, not for profit. And they were able to secure the location through a private, uh, like a uh, wealthy family who had this warehouse. Uh, spare not doing anything so they got it for three years and after the three years they're not sure what would happen to the location so I had this discussion with Mark also uh, Stefan Longman uh, another artist who happened to be uh, sipping a coffee around so we started a chat uh, among us about uh, like seven or eight uh, in Beijing pace gallery being driven out by the prices so you know like inflation crisis and you know, all the things of course you know it's a it's almost like an icebreaker if uh, in such expensive city you just start saying oh this price has grown and then everybody would just start joining and telling you their own personal experience of how hard or which part they find hard on a daily level and after waving goodbye to mark that was my day one uh, my day two is very short it's only like literally a couple of hours because uh, i had to sleep the next day i have a very early uh, flight in the morning so i was walking around i wasn't even having any hope of coming across anything open because it's already very late but i came across the jam art factory it's a irish design print gallery space or shop if you may say a very small but cute location with very uh, wacky uh, slogans uh, uh, very funny posters I loved it so I went in and they say oh sorry like we're closed but you have like two minutes so it was like exactly two minutes before the doors closing so I just grabbed two prints and I had a quick chat so this location had existed for like 17 years I think they also sell online and because it's cute and small they sell cheap to uh, tourists to locals to all sort of people from students to like professionals so they have a very wide range of products if i may say products because this is not only art but also design and also wide range of population that might be interested in their products so i think because of the diversity they are able to uh, hold on to the business even though you know things are, are tough the last location is amazing like i have to uh, dedicate more time to it although i'm running out of time because um, i think yeah i'm running out of battery as well the uh, last location is called palace project and i came across it purely by accident so i was walking towards uh, like some restaurant area to look for some dinner just a couple of hours before heading to bed and saying goodbye to dublin i came across this building says music school and i was like oh like nice i took a photo because my parents used to run their music school uh, in china so i was like hey you know look if you were to start a music school in uh, dublin maybe it would be like this and i saw on the map palace project with some very attractive uh, street art so i thought it might be something like berlin you know you have some something something project but it's not really a building it's like exterior wall where you can take photos of like street art mural so i went i thought okay at least i can take a photo from outside and the moment i came inside a nice gentleman stopped me and saying um we are almost uh, starting like what's your name uh, are you okay to be taken photo off i was like you're starting to do what <laughs> tell me and he's like uh aren't you here for the palace project and pointing at the hallway i was like yeah i'm here for the palace project he's like okay so the performance is about to start i was like what performance and he laughed he's like you don't know and you are here i'm like yeah is there a problem and he's like no no no, no. today is your lucky day i went in and i was so amazed it is a very very nice it's not a one performance it's a group of performance organized by chronic collective actually i would call it chronic art collective because it's a collective of artists who suffers from uh, who want to raise awareness of uh, chronic uh, disease and disabilities so it's a strong group with a solid uh, statement and strong cause and i saw like four or five different performances 
absolutely amazing.、Uh, one of the poetry reading, poem reading section is like the best poem I've heard for years, and it's like wow! It's I was mind blown, and I came into unnoticed, unaware of just two three minutes. Before the performance started, and it was such a coincidence. And I think my whole trip, being there, you know, just at that right time to meet the right people, it was almost like there is an invisible hand, like organizing me to put me literally there. And that had really made my trip worth it. So I would want to dedicate another video to the Chronic Collective, but this video is about the places. So let's focus on the、uh, Palace Project. I met one of the founder,、uh, Mark Colin. He told me that、uh, they were、uh, in different locations before, and at one period of time, like 13 years ago, they were in three different locations at the same time because they couldn't find one large location enough to organize a show or to have everybody in the same location. So they have to be broken into pieces around the city, like scattered around. And just ten years ago, they were able to secure this location. It's the back yard of the music school that belonged to the same owner of the school landlord, and they had it doing nothing. So、uh, he came in and proposed to rent the location for ten years. And the、uh, last year was the end of the ten-year contract, and they got a small extension of a year. And even now, they're not sure what's going to happen. They could have a small extension again, or maybe not. So obviously, I can smell some anxiety among the collective because it's、uh, such a beautiful location next to the St. Patrick's Church,、uh, next to restaurants and bars. It's almost too good to be true to have such amazing space with a courtyard,、uh, with uh, like a theater part, like with a back office room.、Uh, so you know, it's just a very convenient space for artists and art lovers to gather around, and it's. A pity that they, if they couldn't secure it for any longer, and I'm not really sure where they will go next. Yeah, so that's the ten places I have visited, and now I would like to share with you three of my tentative findings.、Um, I, I didn't really、um, do further research, so it's just from the back of my head. The first thing I find is that in a booming city, it's almost like a sword with two blades, a coin with two sides.、Um, you have on the one side good economy, so if you work or if you、um, have some sort of leverage, like you you have a house, you rent out, or you have previously existed some sort of contract that you have a location you already secured, is very good because you're able to leverage on that and make money a lot easier, and you're able to meet like-minded art. Artist because other artists will be attracted by this、um, uh, location, the city or the district. But on the flip side, the more expensive the city becomes, the economy, the better it is. The harder it is for an artist to secure an art location, like a studio space, gallery space, or a art center, or even like a, a location to live in the city as an artist. So、uh, it really depends on you know、uh, if. You choose to be in the city. That's a different thing. Like you come prepared with the budget. If this is your hometown, like you're already there, then it grow onto you, or it like it's like a wave, come crashing where you are. That reminds me of artists、uh, who were previously、uh, in Seven and Eight, also galleries. They are now in Songzhuang or even other more remote locations because、uh, the space in the city are becoming very, very unreachable, unaffordable. Then the second thing is that some expensive cities they're expensive because of rich people. Okay, I know it sounds funny to say that. Okay, let's just call them you know high net worth individuals or whatever investors, international investors. They Uh, were attracted by certain things, maybe real estate, maybe low taxation. Right, Ireland is considerably a tax haven,、uh, among other European member states, and they were attracted by certain things. And those kind of people that got attracted by certain things are not the kind of people, not necessarily the same people that would like to buy your art. 
Right, so again, like uh, what I see in the Seoul Gallery, uh, they were in a good location, they were in a beautiful place, but the food traffic is not the same. So it's almost like the discrepancy between the kind of people you target that would like to buy your art and the people who actually will see you, visit you, or by accident come across your art, either online or offline. So because of this slight difference, you have to choose either to meet your new audience, let's say offer something that when people pass in front of you, what kind of things they would like, offer that. That means you have to re-adapt or redo your whole business model. Or you try to uh, bring your art to a different location, either through art fair or through other sort of like closing down location and moving to a new place. Number three, there are few things that the city council are able to help you with, but it's very limited. Clearly, they have a different understanding of how to organize an art space. Right? They will put you together with a musician next door, a film studio. You have people screaming for a, a retake, right? action, or I'm just exaggerating. right? Obviously, you have kids running around and painting when you're trying to you know, um, set up exhibition. Maybe you love kids, but maybe you don't. Likely, the city council would have a different plan, a different agenda uh, from what you would hope for or wish for. And you cannot rely on anyone else, even your own city hall, to uh, make your wish come true. You have to uh, make plans for yourself. Now I would like to offer you some solutions. This is totally my own personal opinion. If you have a better solution, make sure you leave me a comment in the comment box below. This solution consists of three steps. So the step number one is to move outside of the core of the city. The whichever part that is expensive, move out of it. And you may say, okay, the whole point is I don't want to move out. Well, you know, it's not really realistic if you want to be in the city center of you know, Berlin, of Paris, of Dublin, you know, it's just too expensive. And maybe, again, the food traffic is not kind of people you want to attract. You're just being uh, very disturbed and frustrated. So find another location. For example, uh, someone told me there's a place called Cow House Studios in the countryside an hour and 20 minutes away from Dublin. It's in a rural area, very tranquil, with a grass, clean air, no traffic. Wonderful. Maybe that offers you a very quiet place to work. And, or maybe you can just move a few blocks away to a less crowded and less expensive district. Like the Temple Bar Gallery Studio, they moved a few districts away. And guess what? A few years later, they are in a good location. So you have to bet on a new location, uh, which has potential to become the next hot trend. Then the second step is to hire pop-up locations like the Hang Taf Gallery. So you can totally hire, okay, this location is good this year. You rent for a week, two weeks, a month, two months, or even like four or five months. Of course, you don't want to rent a year because that would be too expensive. Or you can do a pop-up in another country or in an art fair that falls under the pop-up idea is that you take the art and you go to your customers instead of uh, clinging on to a physical location. You know, Instead of that, go away, go to your customers, and you can precisely target exactly where they are because you have uh, the data of the art fairs, of other art communities, and you can even do some sort of artist residency to find out what is going on in other cities around the world. So you can uh, find a next spot to either temporarily or permanently relocate yourself to. The last step of this three-step strategy is to go online. And of course, you know, like the whole point is you want to be able to sell art physically, locally, and maybe that's why you clicked onto this video. I say go online is not just like close everything down and just to exist online virtually only. A lot of people would still like to see the art before purchasing it. That's totally normal. So going online is just a complimentary tool for you to keep in touch with the collectors, the community, several galleries that were closed, um, like the first one, Inspire Gallery, didn't keep the domain name. So unfortunately, when I visited uh, the Inspire Gallery's old 
domain, it was like a domain for sale. You know, if I were able to find the new location or the new pop up or to draw a newsletter, it would be much better for uh, the gallery to be able to uh, retain customers. So that is uh, what I've thought about after visiting Dublin. It was an amazing trip with many beautiful encounters. Totally love it. Before finishing this video, I just want to give a big shout out to our lovely patrons. Thank you very much for your support. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to uh, have the courage to talk to them because, you know, I would feel like I'm a nobody, right? Like, who am I to, like, approach them? It really motivates me. Again, thank you very much for your support and for your motivation. That's all for today. Um, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.